Hello world, this is Craig. Okay, well, DHL finally got around to delivering my latest order of circuit boards from China. And, you know, it's interesting thing about DHL, I, j I just don't get, I'm about 15 or 20 miles away from, you know, their local hub. And it took, uh, let's say, I think three days to get from China to San Francisco and up to my hub. And then it took just a little less than a week, just a few hours short of a week to make it the last 15 or 20 miles from the hub to me. And I just don't understand how DHL makes a go of it with that kind of service. It's, and that's not a one-off. That's the way, that's just typically what I expect from DHL is you know, three days from China and then a week bouncing around in the back of a truck. But, but I guess with the coronavirus going around, it gave it an extra week for the virus to die in the package. Okay, so these are my boards, and some of these are going to be pretty exciting projects and something I'm really looking forward to. So if we look at these, uh, these are mostly for the SBC85 system. The first one I have here is a backplane. So you can see it's a little four-slot backplane. uses real inexpensive uh, little uh, PCI edge connectors. has a place for the power supply to come in. A little bit of protection here, a switch, some capacitors. I did bring out all of the signals so that we can put uh, little stakes on the front or we can put 90 degree stakes on the back and connect with a logic analyzer any of the signals. All of the signals are carried through even though we're only using you know 50 of them or whatever on the for the actual SBC85 board itself. They're all just carried through in case you've got some kind of a project that you're talking from board to board. Uh, or just in the future. They are terminate. there's terminators on this board, one on each end, and this is just a little sip. It's a pull up, pull down uh, resistor. I'm only using, I think, one or two on each end, but you can see there's a little tiny pad here on each of them that if you want to, you could uh, patch from, from a terminator over to whatever signal you're having problems with, or if you have a high speed signal on the back plane. So they're just there for future. Okay, so that's the back plane. And that should be really useful for expanding the system as well as just tapping in and looking at the signal lines without having to use little little grabbers. It's always more convenient to use just the stakes on the header. Okay, also for the SPC85 is a little cassette interface board. And this uses the Intel format. You know, back at the time there were uh, three real competing formats or maybe two competing formats. Intel, I think, had not really competed well in the cassette interface. But this is a nice, robust interface. It runs on a, a single chip. It's a quad op amp. And then have a, you know, like a, a eighth inch connector for the data out and the data in from the tape. We have some LEDs here. I put on a little circuit here that tells us if the volume is too high or too low or okay. And some, and some general diagnostics. We can talk to this board from two different ways. We can either use the SID and SOD lines off the back plane, or we could just come in and use a couple of pins on the generic port for the 8155 that comes off of the SBC85. So we can use either one of those. There's jumpers down here to decide if we're going to use the SID and SOD lines, which are already connected to the MAX232 on the SBC85 board, or we can use the I.O. expansion uh, from the 8155 or just any standard I.O. expansion. Okay, that's the cassette interface. Uh, the next one up, oh, this isn't for my uh, SBC85. This is for my Intel MDS system. On the 8-inch drives for that, for some reason, rather than just use the jumpers that are on the drive to select it, they decided to make a circuit board for that, and I have a couple of drives that were missing that uh, for some reason when I got them. So I duplicated the board from a couple of other drives, and the only purpose of this board is to uh, select which drive it is and also change from a ribbon connector over to an edge connector to go right into the back of the, the sugar drive itself. So I was short a couple of these, so I had some of those made. I may also made a little relay board. This was really for a different project, but I, while I was making it, I made it so it was compatible with the SBC85 a uh, little expansion bus. So again, this is the little header that can connect to the 8155 I.O. on the SBC85. And it takes one port off of that, so eight eight uh, bits off of that and runs eight relays. These can also stand alone. There's inputs here if we want to control those 
uh, individually. Also, that comes back off of the board so it can be daisy chained with some other board like the cassette interface. So the relay board, this is the version 1.1 of the SBC85 itself. And as I mentioned, I just moved a couple of things around. I moved the power further away from the DB9, so I had room for the USB adapter right here without bumping into the barrel connector. I moved the header for the 8155 down a little bit, and that's that's the interface that is on the the serial or the relay card and the cassette card. That's that header right there goes goes to these. I fixed the little problem I had put with a decoder in the 8155 where I had too many addresses and rather than, and had to cut those traces. And uh, that's about all the changes I did for, for that. So this is version 1.1 of that. And if if I'm happy with this version, if I didn't put, if I didn't create any mistakes when I fixed the last mistakes, uh, then this will probably be the last version of this for a while. It's It's been a really fun board to, to program and play with. So if you're interested at all in the 885, I really would recommend making yourself a set of these boards. Uh, this is a, it's just a really fun board for, you know, people that are, have a lot of experience with the 885 or if you're just doing, or if you're just learning it for the first time, uh, this is a, a good little single board computer for that. Okay, the next is the Remix tape interface or Remix. I have a bunch of tape readers and a few punches and some teletypes, so I'm not short of, of paper tape readers and punches, but I wanted a simple way rather than using a breadboard to connect that up to the SBC85. So this is that same port for the 8155 and then a couple of drivers and a little filter here for the IO and some LEDs so we can see what's going on with each of the tracks on the tape and then a DB25 here to connect right to the back of the, or a cable to go to the tape reader. So if you have a old Remix tape reader that's been sitting on the shelf that you're not using, it's a good chance to get it and use it for the with the SBC85. Okay, the last board I've got is a, a bus monitor, and I just really love bus, bus monitors. They're really useful for when you're writing code or you're doing diagnostics on code. Bus monitors are just really handy to see where you are in the code. The single stepping is really nice. And, and of course, you know, just watching the LEDs is always fun. This bus monitor is kind of the next version of the one that I made for my mill mod system. So if you look back a couple of videos, there's the mill mod system. The difference between the mill mod version and this one is it doesn't have the EEPROM uh, socket. Actually, it doesn't have any of the EEPROM sockets on the one for the SBC85. But I did add a seven segment display for the address and the data. So in addition to just the binary LEDs we have across the top, I added a hex seven segment display. Just sometimes I like things in hex and sometimes I like things in binary. We have the status LEDs over here still. We have the speaker. We have the single step and slow step switches. And so I think all of that is on this the same as it was on the mill mod version. A few improvements here and there. But uh, yeah, this is the bus monitor. Okay, so I think those are all the boards that I just received. I don't think I left one sitting on my other desk. But these are the projects that we're going to be working on. If you are interested in anything, uh, let me know, and maybe I'll do it in a different order. But I think I'm probably going to do the version 1.2 of the SBC85 first. Make sure that everything's good to go on that. And then the back plane and then the bus monitor. Uh, those will be a fun set. And then I'll move on and decide if I'm going to do the cassette tape interface or the the uh, paper tape interface next. All right. Well, if you have any questions, let me know. And that's it for now. And that's where I'm going to be working for the next month or so. If you have uh, if you have any input or you want to see thing, anything in special, uh, just let me know. But also, all the documentation for these, you can go to the sbc85.com website. And I'm uploading, I'm just, you know, that website's in progress. I'm not a web builder. So that's in progress, but the data, the files, and, uh, you know, eventually the Gerber files will be up there so that you can go off and make these boards yourself. But you can just go to the sbc85.com website, get all this information that you want. Okay, I appreciate you watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And that's it for now. Talk with you later. Bye-bye.